the very first lesson that I'm going to teach my son, I'm going to give him a red pill education. I'm going to teach him exactly how money works, where it comes from, how it's made, and what it's for. I have absolutely no credentials, I've got no qualifications, I've been to no courses. I believe that going to college, you get a PhD, which stands for poor, helpless and desperate, is the loser's way out. So I uh, decided that uh, I would go in, um, into the big bad world, as the school referred it to. Uh, and take the world on, you know, uh, you know, take the bull by the horns, because uh, I, I didn't believe in the system that I was being sold. In terms of high school grades, I've just got, you know, the bare minimum. I don't have any A levels or anything like that. I'm completely unqualified. You know, what is a qualification? A qualification is something that the, um, that the government say to you that you need this piece of paper to do well in life. That's what a qualification is. It's bullshit. What does Elon Musk say? He says that um, he, prefer, he, he doesn't care about the Harvard um, PhD or you know, the master's degree in Harvard. These are not the kind of people that do well in life. These are the kind of people that are part of the red pill system. These are, part, these are the people that are part of society. You should go ahead and Google the word society and understand what, what to be a member of society means and a citizen. I'm neither a member of society and neither am I a citizen. I'm completely ungovernable and I decide and I control my own life. Nobody dictates my future, my life, my qualifications. I am self-qualified. I qualify myself to be a billionaire. And if I quali qualify myself to be a billionaire, then that will happen. I'm going to be a billionaire. Not a piece of paper. A piece of paper, piece of paper ain't going to tell me that I'm going to become a billionaire. So in terms of um, advancing in life with no credentials, qualifications, well, first of all, I've got nobody to impress. There is no boss that I need to give my CV to. I never had a CV. Like, what the fuck is a CV? It's a piece of shit. That's what it is. You know, I ain't going to go ahead and start having to dish out my CV and begging to people for a job. When you are begging for a job and you're looking for a job, you're not self-sufficient. So you need to, to be ungovernable, you need to be able to take control of your future and democratise your own wealth. So when you democratise your own wealth, then you don't have anybody to impress with qualifications. You know, what we use is a thing called leverage. We're leveraging off of other people's qualifications, experience and credentials. So let's say we want to go and buy a business in an industry that I have no idea about. We simply find an expert, let's say we want to buy a dentist practice or a veterinary practice. We go and find that expert, plug him into our business, give him, let's say, some share capital, uh, donate some share capital in exchange for monthly advisory. So in exchange for that monthly advisory, we now are able to plug in 20 years of that individual's experience to our business model. So when we approach a business owner, we can say, Hey, we have 20 years experience in the veterinary industry or in the dentist industry. So we are well versed within this industry and we're now looking to scale and acquire more businesses in your city within this industry. So in my world, if you want to build real wealth, you do not need to have qualifications. This is a piece of shit. This piece of paper that you've got is a piece of shit. This is a blue pill piece of shit. I would never consider going to college or university. First of all, I can't sit still in a classroom. I get really bored. Like if I'm reading a book, you know, I get really bored. I need to listen to the book. I need to be hands-on. I need to fail. So for me, I learn from being hands-on, going out and practicing. You know, not practicing what I preach, but I go out and practice the theory. By practicing the theory and failing, then, you know, that was the slow way. You know, I did it the wrong way. I did it with no mentor. So by going out and failing many times, it taught me 
lessons that I could never have been taught in school or in a college course. This was, this, this was uh, lessons that I get taught from the street by losing a lot of money, by losing a lot of time. Can you give an example of you losing a lot, a lot of money or time, just being frustrated, and then like what you did to overcome that? I can give you an example of losing time and money. Uh, connected with the wrong guy, uh, you could say that he was um, somebody who was going to lead me into a business acquisition. It was a multi-jurisdiction deal between uh, one, two, three, four countries. So it was a, a companies that own companies within other countries. It was a, a pretty complex transaction, uh, and I ended up paying this uh, gentleman a lot of money for assistance in terms of uh, facilitating legal expenses. And, uh, you know, fo following the wrong people led me down a path of spending six months working on one company every day of my life, got to the stage where the deal was ready to close, ready to jump on a flight from Rome to Argentina, and the deal fell flat in its face. The guy didn't follow f through with everything that he promised me. And, you know, that was, a, that was me being naive for a start. Um, and I lost not only six months of my life, which was the, the most important loss, you know, I lost uh, sixty, seventy thousand dollars as well. But that wasn't the. You know, it was a big deal. It was a lot of money to me back then. Um, but that six months, I'll never get back. Time is not refundable. Money, you know, comes and goes. You could say it's refundable because we can manufacture it whenever we want. Because the the rich get rich by doing things in a certain way. When when you do things in a certain way you get rich. You know, the, the science of getting rich, written by Wallace D. Wattles, specifically says the wealthy get wealthy because they follow a set of systems and strategies. They do things a certain way. So I just didn't know how to do things in a certain way when the, uh, you know, during that six-month period of my life, but now I do. What would you have done differently to avoid that? Simply put, I would have found a mentor. I didn't value mentorship. Uh, you know, back in my twenties, so I didn't really understand the true potential that could be unlocked within me by leveraging the right person. You know, because I got kicked in the balls a few times, you know, kind of it pushed me back. You know, maybe scared to uh, get involved with more people again. You know, thinking maybe they're they're going to lead me down a path where I'm going to end up wasting my time. So you can say I had a little bit of a post trauma. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd a little bit of trauma dealing with the wrong people, wasting a lot of time, wasting a lot of money, and getting no results. But, uh, but that's the thing, it's a bit of a needle in a haystack. When you go out there and you find the right people that can help you get those results, then it's like jumping into the time machine 10 years into the future. So if I had been connected to somebody like me back in my 20s, then I would have absolute certainty, 10 out of 10 absolute certainty, that I would have been 10, 15 years into the future. You know, I'd be far more wealthier than I am now. I do not consider myself wealthy. I might be to other people poorer than me, but to me, I'm not wealthy at all. And that's why I live, I call it lavishly frugal, or frugally lavish. I'm very careful because, you know, I'm thinking about the future. Let's assume that I have lost everything, okay? But I've got knowledge, then I've got no fear. As long as I've got the knowledge, okay? Mentor aside just now, if I had the knowledge that I have now and everything was taken away from me, then I could very easily and very quickly go out and replicate success. I can buy businesses, I can take the revenue from the businesses and I can invest it into compounding interest um, mechanisms that are going to multiply my income for me very, very quickly. Now, let's say I was back in my, uh, going back in time to my uh, 19, 18, 19, 20 year old. If I, if I had a mentor, that's a completely different story. Having a mentor is like having the knowledge. It's like giving yourself an injection of steroids. You get the results a lot quicker. So without the mentor, you know, I, I, I was the guy without the mentor when, when I started. It was a, that was a tough cookie, eh? You know, I, was not, I, I knew that I was going to fail and I was ready to fail. And I was ready to get back up and I knew that I would continue to get back up. So I, 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 I was, um, the mindset was very, very important. So I was ready with the mindset to fail because everything for me was a lesson. Because I knew that eventually I would crack the code.
And it took me a few years to crack the code, and I eventually did. But the fact is this, that you can buy a business within three months. It's a fact. You know, there's no arguing about it. I've proven, it, I've proven this many, many times over. So if you just follow the systems, and you do things in a certain way, and you work hard enough, you're going to get your first seven to eight figure business with no money down. It's a fact. Can you cite one deal structure that kind of made you realize it was a big aha, like, oh wow, I can really do this. I mean, the first one may have been a fluke, and then you did the second one, and you're like, okay, this is really working. And the third, like, okay, I found something here. What was, what was that for you? The very first time that I had my aha moment, was the very first deal that I did because I was determined to buy a business, but the biggest issue that I had was I had no cash. So I thought, well, some, if, I dial, if I speak to enough people and I dial out to enough companies, eventually one of them is going to take me serious. I get 50% seller finance, we call that deferred consideration in the UK, and the other 50%, I simply bought the business on a one times the free cash flow and I resold that free cash flow to a, uh, sorry, I reconfigured the cash flow to a three times multiple and I sold that to an investor and I bought the equity back off the investor on year five. So that to me was common sense. So, you know, God has obviously gifted me with something inside my head that's made me different from other people because to me that was there, that, that was already inside my head, but no business knowledge or experience. So I thought, okay, simplicity says a business should make profit, right? The goodwill is the profit of the business. So I don't want to pay more than one year's worth of the profit of the business. So I thought, okay, if the business has debts, then they're gonna subtract the debts from the goodwill. So I'm gonna inherit these debts. If the business has um, assets, then I'm gonna give, a, a, I'm gonna give, a, a, give a contribution to the asset value, to the net asset value. So the first deal I did was, it was a very, very simple commercial cleaning business. And I was able to buy that for one times the profit. And I thought, well, because I've been able to negotiate a good deal here, they were originally looking for three times, then I'm going to sell, I'm going to resell that equity on a 3x to an investor, meaning that I can lower my entry position, giving me a much higher um, equity holding within that company. So instead of giving away 50%, I'm now giving away 30% of the business, retaining 20% for myself because I've reconfigured the free cash flow. So it might sound crazy to some people that I thought of that. Nobody told me that. To me, it was common sense. And sometimes I struggle to understand why people can't see these very basic things staring them in the face. You know, I believe that I was, I'm a born entrepreneur. I believe that you can reconfigure your DNA to become an entrepreneur, but I believe that I was born one. I was, I was always a, you know, singled out by other entrepreneurs and other people saying, you know, Ken, you're, you're different. I didn't know what they meant by it was different, so I went on a journey to find myself. And um, every day I would kind of wake up thinking, who, who am I? You know, who am I? And I would ask myself who I was many times over. And then I, I get handed this book called The Secret, written by Bob Proctor and Rhonda Byrne. I think uh, Bob Proctor has just uh, passed away, God rest his soul. But... Um, you know, that was one of the books, the first books that I read that changed my life, you know, with manifestation, the law of attraction, and it completely brainwashed me. I thought, wow, I am a future billionaire. Well, I thought I was a future multimillionaire at the time. And I, uh, I became, you know, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. I was completely obsessed. The world, the world was my oyster. There was nothing stopping me. Not a thing. I... Um, I had difficulty understanding the book, but I knew that the book was going to be the key to my success. So I binged the book over and over again. I had the hardback. I bought the sequel called The Power, but I didn't like that book. So uh, I think I got like halfway through and disregarded it. But I read the book over and over again. It became a Bible. And then I bought the audio book. I would listen to it at night, every single night. I was brainwashing myself that that was ingrained in my subconscious mind. And um, I would look at the, watch the, the DVD over and over again. I become completely obsessed with the secret, obsessed, brainwashed. And I was able to manifest anything that I wanted in the, into my life. I, I thought I could buy a $5 million company. I can 
become a multimillionaire, and I am going to become a multimillionaire, it's going to happen. Because I had the belief inside my head. I was completely convinced. I don't believe in the fake it till you make it. I believe in believe it until you become it. So I just believe inside my head that I'm going to become a multimillionaire. And there's, there's not even an if or a but. It is going to happen and that's it. So I had 0.0% doubt that that was going to happen. If you want to use the law of attraction in your life to create success, learn how to manifest. Pick up the book The Secret and learn. You know, you, you need to be writing down your goals on a daily basis, setting reminders in your phone. 369, 3 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the evening, 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 24 hours a day. So you have reminders going off in your phone so that that's the first thing that you see when you look at your phone. Have, have the wallpaper of your phone. Put, put something on there. Put a goal on the wallpaper of your phone. If you, when you wake up in the morning, what I used to do, I wrote myself a check for a million bucks. I put it right up in the ceiling. So every time I woke up in the morning, the first thing I seen was that there was a check for a million bucks on the, uh, the ceiling. And I was just, I was practicing visualization. I would, I would sit in silence, close my eyes, and I would just visualize myself, you know, driving the red Ferrari, having the boat, having those material things that give me the motivation and drive. These were like uh, trophies, you know, th these were... To me, it was like a trophy when you're working towards these materialistic things. For me, it gave me motivation because nobody around me at that time had any of these things around them. There was no motivation. There was a serious lack of motivation, you know, coming from the middle of nowhere. You know, somebody having a supercar or you know, sitting there with a fancy watch is like a wow moment. So, you know, I, I had to use these things as motivation for me in goals so that I could, these, these were milestones. So you could, like, I put a vision board together. You now on the vision board, I put all of the things that I wanted to achieve. So I think the best thing that anybody can do is to go away and start to learn the law of attraction, learn how to visualize, manifest, read the, the book, The Secret. There's an abundance of YouTube videos out there as well that can help you with these techniques, but it's pretty simple. You know, it's the, the law of the universe. You know, if you believe it, you become it. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Thoughts become things. That is it. It's as simple as that. The very first lesson that I'm going to teach my son, I'm going to give him a red pill education. I'm going to teach him exactly how money works, where it comes from, how it's made, and what it's for. So I'm teaching him how to play Monopoly in real life. Now, he's seen tenants come to my door and hand me cash as we're playing Monopoly. And I brought the tenant in and I said, look, Leo, this is the tenant is paying me for the house that's there on the Monopoly board right now in cash. So you see, the more houses that you have, little greenhouses and rent hotels, the more money that your tenants are going to pay you every time that they land in your property. That's them staying in your property. So he's going to get a fundamental understanding exactly what money is, how it's used, and uh, he will never be allowed to work for money. He'll be allowed to work for assets, but understanding exactly how the monetary system operates, who's behind it, economics, governments, how they operate, that nothing is designed in his favor. Everything, everything is designed to disempower him. And I'll give him the, the, the truth about the education system. Why nothing is designed to make you successful. It's designed to disempower you to impoverish you, to integrate you, to make you part of the system, to lie to you, to manipulate you. Because you go to sleep in the box, the house is the box, then you get in the car, which is the box, to drive in that box, to go to school, to learn inside that box, because you're not allowed to think outside the box. It's called the box mentality. And then when you leave that box, you go back in the box with the four wheels and the bus, to go back into your box, which is the house, to go to bed and wake up again. You do that for 16 years, and then what happens? You are going to uh, go back in the box again to travel to college, which is your new box, to learn for another six or eight years, or university, to get that degree, that bullshit piece of paper. And then when you get the poor, helpless, and desperate certificate, what's going to happen next? You're going to get another job inside a box, which you'll probably need to stay in that miserable piece of shit for the next 40 or 50 years of your life to retire to a piece of shit salary, or not, so not salary, 
a piece of shit pension. Then you're going to probably have five more quality years of your life, ten if you're lucky, then you'll be too old to do anything. You're going to die. So people need to wake the fuck up and understand the truth of the, about the system and the lies that we've been taught and told all of our life. Like, what the fuck, man? They taught me Pythagoras' theorem in school. What is that shit? Like, what the fuck is that shit? Why did they teach me that? Why didn't they teach me how to become financially free instead of Pythagoras' theorem? Who even is that dude? We spent so long learning about Pythagoras. So, <laughs> you just got to think, guys. You got to think that uh, the system is not designed in your favor.